This week on TGC News, a new 224 Valkyrie from Seekins, the ATF Annual Awesomeness Report, and Vista Outdoor is on the struggle bus again. TacPack is an enthusiast subscription service that is focused on bringing you stuff you need straight to your door on a monthly basis. Every month is different and you can be met with gun parts, accessories, cleaning gear, or even some bigger and cooler shenanigans. And because you're watching TGC, if you use the code TGC knife, you'll get a free folding knife, TGC tool, and you'll get a free pocket size multi-tool, and TGC grip will get you a free AR grip. Only when you punch those in over at TacPack. Com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone that has been giving us feedback on the videos lately. We put out a bunch of new and different types of content, and there's been a lot of you guys telling us exactly how you feel. That's awesome, and thank you for that. Now, the news. It looks like Seekins Precision is jumping into the 224 Valkyrie game. The rifle is called the VKR-20, and they claim it is everything you could want for long-range accuracy. Let's break down what you get with one of these. From back to front, it has a Seekins Pro Comp 10X stock, which is their version of a Precision adjustable stock. It has a Timney Targa two-stage trigger, of course housed in Seekins' own receiver set. Moving forward, there is a 15-inch SP3R V3 M lock handguard, which has this sort of triangular shape that is covering up the 20 inch match grade one in seven twist 5R rifled barrel. And attached to that is an adjustable gas block as well as Seekins Advanced Tactical Compensator. I find it really interesting seeing companies still releasing any Valkyrie guns with a twist rate slower than one in six and a half. It's been shown many times that the one in seven has a hard time stabilizing those bigger 90, 88 grain and that type of bullet that make the Valkyrie what it is, but for some reason, everyone's still doing it. Either way, I'm curious to see how this one stacks up against all the rest, and if the MSRP of two grand is on point for the amount of value in the gun. How many of you guys are interested enough in Valkyrie to drop $2,000 on a rifle? If you're not, let me know why in the comments. I have a ton of interest in the cartridge, but so far, it is not stacked up as a whole without aftermarket barrel help. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments. Every year, the ATF puts out a report concerning firearms commerce in the US. It's kind of the gauge on how the industry has progressed over the last 12 months. And this year, we are seeing some interesting trends. Some of the data is from years past, but warrants mentioning. For instance, in 2016, the US produced more rifles in one year than ever before. That year, we totaled almost 11 and a half million firearms produced. In 2017, we imported almost four and a half million firearms with a whopping 27% of them coming from one country, Austria. Can you guess what company that is? <laughs> Staggering, really. Also in 2017, we saw a massive drop off in NFA transfers, nearly $40 million down in overall revenue simply because HPA didn't pass. And last but certainly not least, the current amount of NFA items as of February of 2018, 5,502,474 total NFA items in the registry. Holy crap. Now, here's the interesting thing. If you would have told me that number without me seeing the data itself, I would have said that suppressors were the number one item on the list. Well, as it turns out, I would be wrong because destructive devices are at the top of the heap with 2.8 million registered. I have no idea what actual guns those could be, to be honest with you. I've tried racking my brain about DDs to try and figure out exactly what it is, but I just, I can't come up with something that sold that well to be registered that many times over. Suppressors are certainly not a small section of the market though, with a grand total just shy of one and a half million registered. The categories were also broken down by state, and as it turns out, everything is bigger in Texas because they are way out in front with 673,000 items, and they also crush every other state by a large margin with 265,000 silencers registered in the state. 
crush. The next closest for silencers would be Florida at 98,000. There's a link to the PDF down in the description if you wanna see how your state stacks up. Yep, it's struggle bus time. As with Winchester and Ruger last week, Vista Outdoor, parent company of Federal, CCI, Savage, and a ton more, has released their newest earnings report. Somehow, it's their first quarter 2019 report in the middle of 2018. Whoever invented the fiscal calendar is a total jackwagon. Yeah, jackwagon! Now, as is tradition for these reports, there is a statement from the CEO, Chris Metz. I'll try to translate the corporate speak to normal terms. Vista Outdoor's first quarter results exceeded expectations despite continuing headwinds and market challenges. We're doing okay even though we've been riding the struggle bus a bit. Our focus on improved profitability is delivering results. We're driving operational excellence through cost savings initiatives and procurement strategies, and we continue to introduce new innovative products to the market. We found ways to save money by firing people, buying less stuff, and selling off brands to make money. And also, we introduced the 224 Valkyrie. He also stated that their plan to shed some of the brands that weren't part of their core product categories was still on track. Overall profit for the quarter was at $113 million as compared to last year's $146 million. On the call about their earnings, Chris Metz also said something that I find interesting. We are leading the industry. We took price increases, as we've mentioned previously, in January and again in April. However, our two main competitors did not follow. We think it's crazy, and frankly, personally, I think it's reckless that given the pressures we're seeing in commodities and potentially tariffs, that our competitors are not following suit. One of our competitors just came out of bankruptcy. The other one has historically been disciplined, but has just recently taken some price decreases. And I think it's fool's gold because it won't lead to long-term share gain. What I take away from that is that they think people should just blindly buy from them when they raise prices and their competitors should just follow along as they dictate pricing for the entire market. Meanwhile, in reality, consumers don't care and continue to buy from the lowest bidder. Maybe I'm missing something because I don't speak fluent corporate nonsense, but I'm sure someone in the comments will correct me as to why this exactly was being said. This week, our good guy with a gun story transports us to Titusville, Florida on August 4th at 5.30 in the evening. It was a busy day at Isaac Campbell Park. There were barbecues and parties and things of that nature, and a fist fight broke out. One of the men involved in the fight left and then came back several minutes later with a gun and opened fire. It was at that point that a bystander who happened to have a concealed carry permit drew his firearm and stopped the threat. The suspect was airlifted to a nearby hospital with life-threatening injuries. It's situations like this that confirm the fact that you should always be armed and always be ready to protect yourself and your loved ones. And that leads me to a question. How many of you actually carry a firearm on your person, on your hip, wherever on you, from the time you get up until the time you hit the sheets at night? I suspect it's not as many as we all hope. Neomag offers a slick solution to discreetly carrying a spare magazine securely in your pocket. Available in small, medium, and large to hold anything from 380 to 10 mil. Also now available are the extended clip versions, which allow you to carry deeper in your pocket or carry your spare mag with an extension. Utilizing strong neodymium magnets, a steel backer, and titanium clips, these things are built to last. To get 10% off your order over at theneomag.com, use the code TGC2018. It's time again for Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions from all over social media. This week, our questions are coming from the TGC Facebook page. Sam Guerrero wants to know if I would rather hunt with a bullpup or a traditional rifle. That all depends on the type of hunting. In thick brush, a bullpup might be preferred, but you can get away with a normal rifle just as people have as long as hunting has been around. I personally don't have a preference one way or the other with that. 
Andrew Vincent says, do you think the 3D printed gun case will make its way to the Supreme Court? And if so, would that have a major impact on the community? Yes and yes. I know Cody Wilson and crew will fight this thing as far as they have to. I think it's absurd to think that files from 2013 are suddenly a problem five years later when politicians discover them, but only time will tell how that shakes out. The implications on the community are really tough to say, almost impossible to say, without knowing how the proceedings go. Kyle Meyer says, how about an update on the HPA? We get asked this question all the time. HPA is dead in the water right now. We haven't done an update video because there is no update to share. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. My friendly fire question to you guys this week, if you could hunt anywhere in the world, where would you go and what would you hunt? Drop your answer down in the comments, and hey, if you want me to answer your friendly fire question, send it to me over on theguncollective.com. And that is it for this week's show. Guys, you know what to do. If you didn't enjoy this video, hit that button. If you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, and consider supporting us via the links in the video description below. We have an Amazon affiliate store, as well as links to purchase cool shirts just like this one, and of course, links to find us all over your favorite social media platforms. And as always, thank you all for watching. I'll see you soon. And that is it for this week's show, guys. You know what, mother, what am I doing with the salute? Uh, it's all out of time. I'm screwing it up, Izzy. I messed this up. Chop, chop. The shirts worn in today's video on the Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.